Obay Shebandar is a Middle East analyst out of Dubai. He joins us now live to talk about Baghdad's decision. Thanks so much for joining us. So Baghdad argues that these PMFs only fight in the interest of all Iraqis, but those who oppose this move claim that their participation will only inflame sectarian tensions and they will put civilians at risk of human rights abuses. So which is it? Look, this is a very troubling development. The, the so-called popular mobilization units are actually nothing more than a band of Shia extremist militias of over 100,000 armed men that operate throughout the country. And the reality is, is that these Shia militia uh, units take their orders not from the central government, not from Prime Minister Haider Abadi, but from their Iranian paymasters. It is the government of Iran and the Iranian Revolutionary Guards that provide them funding, that provide them weapons, that provide them political indoctrination and military indoctrination. In fact, what's even more troubling is that the two senior commanders of, this, uh, of the Shia extremist militias are actually convicted terrorists. One, Abu Hadi al-Mohandis, was convicted of blowing up the American and the French embassies in Kuwait. The other, Hadi al-Amiri, is the if a senior commander in the Badr Corps, which is essentially an extension of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards. So many in Iraq are troubled by this development and view the Iraqi parliament and the Iraqi government as essentially giving a free pass to the Shia extremist militias who have been accused by many Iraqi Sunnis of forcing them out of their home, forcing people out of their homes, of, uh, of, of, of extrajudicial killings and other, other crimes so against humanity that the central government in Baghdad is looking the other way. What is it then that Baghdad thinks it has to gain here? Is it just a very short-term strategy to try and defeat Daesh? Well, one argument here is that the Iraqi government is attempting to put these Shia militias under the direct control of the Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al Abadi. Unfortunately, we currently have a very weak prime minister who essentially does not have much control over these so-called popular mobilization units. On the other hand, these uh, units was, were essentially formed after the collapse of the Iraqi army two years ago when Daesh invaded Mosul and western Iraq. Uh, so really the, the central government is really stuck in a very difficult place where it has very little control over these units. These units, on the other hand, also claim that they are an integral part in the fight against Daesh. But many analysts and many uh, Iraqis on the ground will tell you that these sectarian militias are essentially setting the stage for a renewed round of fighting, of sectarian fighting, if not perhaps another civil war in Iraq after Daesh is defeated in Mosul and in northern Iraq. And that is potentially a very troubling, troubling development for a country okay. like Iraq, who's already gone through one civil war and already gone through this horrendous fight against Daesh, which is still not over. Oh, by speak if you can from uh, Ankara's perspective. Do you think it's fair for Baghdad to refuse the participation of Turkish forces in Iraq, but then sanction the Shia militias, whom most believed are fully backed and supported by Iran? Well, the hypocrisy here of Baghdad is very evident. Uh, where we've had senior Iraqi officials, to include the Iraqi prime minister, essentially welcoming Iranian government interference in Iraq sovereign, uh, sovereign territory, where, where they, whereas they've welcomed where, where the, the central government in Baghdad has allowed senior Iraqi, uh, sorry, Iranian Revolutionary Guard commanders to operate on the front lines in northern Iraq and other places in the fight against Daesh, whereas they've rejected uh, uh, entreaties by Ankara and the Turkish armed forces to train uh, local Turkmen and local Sunni forces to fight against Daesh. I think we can only really draw one conclusion here that sectarianism uh, plays a very important role here in the decision making that's ongoing in Baghdad. Also that many of these uh, Iraqi politicians, uh, Shia politicians and Shia militia commanders spent a lot of time in Iran when they were uh, in the opposition to the government of Saddam Hussein. And there are so long standing relationships between Qasem al-Samani, the commanding general of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, and the uh, popular mobilization units, uh, units uh, commanders and Haider al-Abadi. So certainly there's very evident hypocrisy here when Baghdad looks to Iran to interfere in its sovereign affairs while, it does not, while the central government does not allow the Turkish government to train and support local Turkmen and Sunni forces in the ongoing fight against Daesh. Okay, Obey Shabandar joining us there from Dubai. Thanks so much for your...